And it's Ken Kreitzer for CBSI Services and the Marketing ID Exchange. We had a lively discussion of current marketing practices uh, by three practitioners, and we started with Sarah Walsh, and we had Linda Garib from Walters Clower, and we had Elizabeth Hollip from Carl Fisher Music. And uh, why don't we start with, with Sarah? Uh, you've done a lot of work in prospecting uh, for uh, uh, the Fortune 1000 uh, market, and uh, what are some of the ideas? And you had a couple of good ideas today uh, that's crucial to, uh, to reach uh, the big company market. Well, one of the things I had done earlier on in my career was start an information service that met the needs of the tax director in large 14, 1, 000, Fortune 1000 companies. One of the frustrations they had was feeling like they were always being blindsided and never being sort of proactive with the CFO and other senior management. So this information service that we provided for them allowed us a 40% penetration rate of the war Fortune 1000, which gave us the opportunity to establish relationships with these people and then sell in additional services. Very good. And uh, Linda, uh, you started a lively discussion about marketing to millennials, also to uh, what, what it takes to hire and retain millennials in your organization. Uh, what were some of the ideas? You had a couple of good ideas for us uh, today in the Marketing Idea Exchange. Sure, thank you. Yes, uh, I don't think it's really that different from um, retaining talent in general. Like, as long as that they feel like that they can learn and grow with the company, that there's always opportunities for them to learn, then I think millennials, like other generations, are very open to um, continuing to grow their careers with different companies as long as those opportunities exist for growth. Very good. And we have Elizabeth Hollop, who uh, really told us an interesting story about working in the classical music business, uh, uh, marketing different types of uh, uh, musical uh, sheets. And uh, Elizabeth, you told us about uh, finding your way into uh, your company, and they had 145 years of uh, data, but none of it was uh, digitized or organized. What did you do? Uh, our first step was really uh, streamlining it and making sure that all the data had the same title to it, so that um, so that when when customers go looking for something, it's 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 a uh, it's consistent. So the data was was in a place. It was in a, in a warehousing system. Taking it out, cleaning it, adding the new things to it that are that are needed for an e-commerce area, so that you have your menus and your filters and all that things, so that then the end consumer can get to the data. And and most of the data didn't have a lot of that attached to it, um, as saying that it's for a violin solo, it's for piano trio. What is this for, and what is it about? So that the end consumer can get the data they need to make their decisions. Absolutely, and maybe just ask each of you. Uh, up. What was uh, a key point that you heard today in the discussion that uh, you felt was very beneficial? Oh, I thought actually the conversation as it evolved with millennials around the value of a big brand name versus a smaller organization was actually a very interesting conversation, which I think built on the original, what does it take to retain millennials? But then we evolved to you know, there still continues to be great value from an early career standpoint to be at one of the big brands. And that the entrepreneurial aspect, which is what the millennials it does appeal to them, it can be had in a larger organization. And then there's other additional learnings that I think will hold a millennial in good stead, their career. Very good. And uh, Linda, a key idea, another thought uh, from the meeting today? Yeah, it was just great to hear um, colleagues from thinking about the music business to the accounting firms really going through the same challenges of digitizing data and just making it really easy for consumers to access. Uh, at Walters Kluwer, we're doing that with a lot of our legal content. Case law from the 1900s is now, you know, how do you make it really easy for people to access data very quickly? So from music to law, really a lot of the same challenges that we're facing as marketers. Absolutely. And Elizabeth, you really I uh, got everyone interested when you asked how many had actually uh, played an instrument in their career. Well, what's an insight, another insight that you can share? About the meeting? About the meeting. I mean, you built your marketing department. You mentioned from one to six people. And uh, so that's a lot for, uh, for, uh, for a company uh, that's uh, very long standing. 
uh, I guess the insight would be, I mean, people who play instruments are, are very intelligent people. It, it creates a skill set that you don't get otherwise. So uh, uh, keeping the arts going. Um, I would piggyback on what Linda said about, about having the data and using it in a way that is um, you, so that the end consumer can get what they want, be it a B2B or B2C, so that's easy for what they get. So millennials, when they want something really fast, they can get it. For people who over, over you know, maybe not have that much cons uh, computer experience, can get things what they need really fast. So using that data to create a, a space, digital space, that's easy to use. Well, ladies, great to see you today at the Marketing Idea Exchange, and I look forward to seeing you at, a, at, a, at an event in uh, 2017. This is Ken Kreitzer for CBSI Services and the Marketing Idea Exchange.